So today I'm here to discuss a new form of loss function called arc face that was introduced in this paper, Arc Face, Additive Angular Margin Loss for Deep Face Recognition, which was published in January of 2018. In many facial recognition models, the spread of features produced by its loss function is quite large, causing the boundaries between classes to be blurred, thus making it difficult for the model to correctly classify images. ArcFace's additive angular margin helps to reduce this spread by pushing together the images of the same individual while simultaneously pushing away images belonging to others. According to ArcFace researchers, this technique has allowed them to outperform all other state-of-the-art loss functions, which they compared to on a range of datasets. I'll start by briefly discussing several commonly used loss functions, their weaknesses, and how ArcFace is able to outperform them. Softmax is the most commonly used loss function for facial recognition problems. It works by inputting a vector of legits and normalizing them to be a probability distribution for each class. The loss function then calculates the distance between what the distribution of the output should be and what the original distribution really is. As the image below illustrates, Softmax doesn't enforce separation between classes, which causes the classes to be closely clustered together. Centerloss tries to increase the disparity of classes produced by Softmax by calculating the center for each class and then moving its intracorrelated features closer towards it, thus creating class compactness. This is an improvement on Softmax, but it comes with some drawbacks. First of all, calculating the center of classes is computationally expensive because it has to calculate the distances of all features to find a center of each class. Secondly, the center chosen isn't totally accurate because all features aren't able to be calculated ahead of time, so centers need to be created and redefined in each batch. Finally, the distance penalty that's applied to features is calculated using the Euclidean distance measurement, which isn't the best way to separate softmax losses. Triple loss is a commonly used method that works by comparing three images, two images of the same person and one imposter. The goal is to make the distance between the two images of the same person be significantly shorter than the distance of the anchor and the imposter. This is done by adding a margin value to the positive image. The main problem with triplet loss is that it's very expensive. There's a combinational explosion with large datasets, as larger numbers of images leads to an exponential number of pairings. Additionally, triplet loss requires semi-hard sampling in order to learn effectively. If the function were to compare two random images of, say, Tom Cruise and Whoopi Goldberg, chances are the distance between the two Tom Cruise images would be much shorter than the distance to Whoopi Goldberg, which would satisfy the loss function, though it wouldn't teach the model much. Instead, it's much more effective to compare two similar images, like comparing Tom Cruise to Tom Hanks, which makes the model work hard to adjust its weights and create a better classification. This process of semi-hard sampling is also very computationally expensive. Most losses use the Euclidean distance-based margin to separate features. Sphereface researchers discovered Euclidean measurements aren't ideal for softmax, which has a naturally angular distribution. Sphereface utilizes softmax's natural angular distribution by imposing discriminative constraints on a hypersphere manifold, allowing the inter- and intra-loss values to be controlled by a parameter m. This method is called angular softmax or asoftmax. By constraining the weights and biases, the new decision boundary only depends on theta 1 and 2, so it's then just a matter of adding an integer m to control the decision boundary. m quantitatively controls the size of the angular margin, simultaneously enlarging the interclass margin and compressing the intraclass angular distribution. For convenience of calculation, m is computed as an integer, with a value greater than or equal to 1. If m equals 1, then the decision planes of category 1 and category 2 are on the same plane. If m is greater than or equal to 2, then there are two decision planes for category 1 and 2, and indicates that the maximum angle with the classification is smaller than the small angle of other classes by m times. A soft max approximates the optimal value of m, with its criteria being that the maximal intraclass distance should be smaller than the minimal intraclass distance. There are two main drawbacks of A soft max. The first is due to the integer value of m. <clears throat> which causes the curve of the target legit, i.e. the legit which corresponds to the ground truth label, to be very steep and thus hinder convergence. Secondly, the decision margin of A softmax depends on theta, which leads to different margins for different classes. As a result, in the decision space, some interclass features have a larger margin while others have a smaller margin, which reduces its discriminating power. Like Sphereface, Cosface adopts a different angular margin technique called Large Margin Cosine Loss, or LMCL, 
which aims to improve on SphereFace's aforementioned shortcomings. It does this by defining a decision margin in cosine space, unlike SphereFace's asoftmax loss, which defines it in angular space. It starts by reformulating the softmax loss by L2 normalizing the features and weights to remove radial variance. This addresses asoftmax's first issue of producing different margins for different classes, which is the result of depending on the value of theta. As with a softmax, a margin value is added to increase the interclass distance and reduce the intraclass distance. Cos faces loss function maximizes cos theta1 and minimizes cos theta2 for C1 to perform the large margin classification. This is superior to a softmax's decision boundary, whose margin is not consistent over all theta values, making the decision boundary difficult to optimize. Arcface further improves the discriminative power achieved by Sphereface and Cosface by applying an additive angular margin loss. Unlike Cosface, which applies an angular margin directly to the target legit, Arcface applies it to the inverse of the angle using the ArcCos function before using the cosine function to get back the target legit. It then rescales the legits by a fixed feature norm and the rest is the same as the softmax loss function. So, how's it done? We start with the normal softmax loss function, which is shown here. For simplicity, the bias is set to equal zero, and the legit is transformed to be equal to the cosine distance after feature and weight normalization. The L2 normalized individual weight is set to equal one, and the L2 normalized embedding feature is rescaled to S. The learned embedding features are thus distributed on a hypersphere with a radius of S. These normalizations allow the predictions to only depend on the angle between the feature and the weight. The embedding features are distributed around the feature center of the hypersphere, so we can add an additive angular margin M between each weight and feature and enhance the separation and compactness between classes. Below is an example of class separation between ArcFace and SoftMax. The experiment was made using images of eight different identities with around 1500 images each. As the image shows, the SoftMax loss provides roughly separable feature embedding, but produces noticeable ambiguity and decision boundaries, while the Proposed arcface loss can obviously enforce a more evident gap between the nearest classes. Arcface directly optimizes the geodesic distance margin by virtue of the exact correspondence between the angle and arc in the normalized hypersphere. It achieves state-of-the-art performance on 10-face recognition benchmarks, including large-scale image and video datasets. It only needs several lines of code, and it's extremely easy to implement in the computational graph-based deep learning frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. Furthermore, Arcface does not need to be combined with other loss functions in order to have stable performance and can easily converge on any training datasets. It only adds negligible computational complexity during training. Current GPUs can easily support millions of identities for training and the model parallel strategy can easily support many more identities. Arcface research has also experimented by combining all of the margins of Sphereface, Arcface and Cosface in a united framework they refer to as CM. As the bottom left figure shows, Combining all of the margins also created target legit curves with a high performance. This figure demonstrates the decision boundaries for each loss function in a binary classification example. The dashed lines represent the boundary decision and the gray areas of the decision margins. As you can see, softmax doesn't create any decision margin between classes, whilst all the others do to some degree. Arcface's decision margin is best, creating a constant linear angular margin throughout the whole interval. This is due to ArcFace's additive angular margin having the exact correspondence to the geodesic distance. Spearface and Cosface, on the other hand, only have a non-linear angular margin. All of the models were trained using four datasets, Cassia, VGG Phase 2, MS1 MV2, and Deep Clint Phase. Each training set was separately employed in order to conduct fair comparison with other models. During training, the improvement from different settings was checked using several verification datasets. Besides the most widely used LFW and YTF datasets, the performance of ArcFace was compared to recent large pose and large age datasets CPLFW and CALFW. Finally, the ArcFace model was tested on large scale image datasets as well as the video dataset IQIYIVID. Before testing, the normalized face crops 112 by 112 were generated by utilizing five facial points. ResNet 50 and ResNet 100 CNN architectures were employed for the embedding network, which is a widely used standard. The feature scale S is set to 64 and the angular margin M of the arc face is set to 0.5, which seems to be the best setting. 
All experiments in the paper were implemented by the Apache MXNet framework. Finally, the batch size was set to 512 and was trained using Ford NVIDIA GPUs. On Cassia, the learning rate starts at 0.1 and is divided by 10 at 20k and 28k iterations, and the training process is finished at 32k iterations. On MS1 MV2, the learning rate is divided at 100k, 160k iterations, and finished at 180k iterations. For testing, the momentum is set to 0.9, and weight decay is 0 0.0005. Only the feature embedding network is kept without the fully connected layer and the 512D features are extracted for each normalized face. To get the embedding features for templates, the feature centers of all images are calculated from the template or all of the frames from the video sets. Finally, all of the overlap identities between the training set and the test set were removed for strict evaluations and they only used a single crop for all testing. As the red arrow points out, ArcFace performed best with all three validation sets. The ArcFace, CosFace, and SphereFace hybrids, referred to as CM1 and CM2, also performed very well, better than SphereFace alone in both settings. Also interestingly, the ArcFace triplet hybrid loss performed better than the triplet loss by itself, as indicated by the blue arrows. And of course, SoftMax had the worst performance of all, due to its lack of intra-class compactness and inter-class disparity. LFW and YTF datasets are the most widely used benchmark for unconstrained face verification on images and videos. The ArcFace researchers followed the unrestricted with labeled outside data protocol to observe its performance. As you can see in the table, they trained ArcFace on MS1 MV2 with ResNet 100, which beat all of the other losses by a significant margin on both verification sets. The rest of the paper just discusses ArcFace's performance with all of the other verification and test sets all of which ArcFace outperformed the other losses. This shows how the additive angular margin penalty can noticeably enhance the discriminative power of deeply learned features and result in better classification.